Hey everyone, here are my five favorite audio recording software for Mac. So I'm using the word favorite because these are five pieces of software that I feel work really well for me and so out of all the DAWs that I played with on the Mac, these are the ones that I would recommend to other people. And that's not to say that the DAW that you use is inferior in any way, it's just that these ones really suit my workflow, so that's why I'm going to recommend them. Now these are paid pieces of software, so if you're looking for something free, if you're getting into recording, I'll have a link above that you can click on and check out some free software that I would recommend, just to get you familiar with the process. So anyways, here are my five favorite DAWs. So the first DAW that I'm gonna talk about is Logic Pro. And this makes sense because Logic Pro is owned by Apple. So there's a good chance that if you own a Mac, you are using a lot of the whole Mac ecosystem features and Logic just makes a lot of sense. First off, I think out of all the DAWs, it's probably one of the better looking ones. Apple has always taken pride in like their UI. The simplicity and the user ability of Logic is fantastic, especially compared to some other DAWs that are out there. You can pick up Logic for about $200, which for the price point is one of the cheaper DAWs on the market right now, which makes sense because if Apple can sell this at a cheaper price point, it probably means that down the road, you're gonna buy into the Apple ecosystem a little bit more, which means that your next computer and your hardware moving forward is gonna be a Mac. Logic integrates really well with Final Cut. So you could be making a film project and then export that out fairly easy into Logic and just keep doing your final mixes. It creates a really nice workflow and having that audio suite attached to Final Cut and it gives Final Cut a bit of an edge over other non-linear editors like Premiere or even DaVinci. If you love just making something from scratch, Logic Pro has an amazing set of loops and effects and instruments that you can get going right away. In fact, I tend to use Logic Pro a lot of times when I'm working with clients because it's so easy. Because it's Apple, or if there's any kind of change in the architecture of Apple, Logic and Final Cut are gonna have first dibs on those changes. So you know that if you are in that ecosystem, that any changes that roll out, you're covered. The next DAW that I would recommend is Ableton Live. Ableton is one of the newer pieces of software I've been playing with is I've always looked at Ableton as like a live kind of piece of software, not really as a as a DAW. But I didn't realize that they have added a ton of multi-track recording features. In fact, there wasn't anything I couldn't do in Ableton. I've seen now actually a lot of people from the rock world are actually incorporating Ableton into their production. So anyways, if that's something you're interested in, I totally recommend checking out Ableton just because I think it will give you a really cool, fresh perspective on audio production. So the third DAW on my list is Reaper. In fact, I think I've talked about Reaper on all my DAW comparisons in the last couple of years just because it's a really good piece of software. The concept behind Reaper is that it becomes the DAW to end all DAWs. It's, it, it's designed to be able to be totally customizable and do whatever you need it to do. So let's first talk about the price. There's a 60 day free trial where you get to play with the full version and you could keep doing that for, oh, ever? If you do decide to buy it, there's a $60 license fee for majority of people, which is really cheap. If you're a commercial studio that decides to use Reaper, I think like if you're making over $20,000 a year, it, it costs $200 for the commercial license. Things that I really like about Reaper is the fact that it's totally customizable, especially the UI because I always pick on the UI. I find it very bland, but if you decide that you want to customize it, there's a ton of skins you can download. If you love effects, there's a ton. It comes with so many really good sounding plugins right out of the box. One of the things that's really interesting about this piece of software is the file print. It's very small. In fact, it's so small, you can run this software off a thumb drive. Anyways, I totally recommend checking out Reaper because this is one of those pieces of software that you'll probably use for the rest of your life. It's really good. My fourth pick is Steinberg's Cubase. Cubase has been around forever. As long as I've been in audio production, Cubase has been one of those pieces of software that have always ended up on my computer at some point. Steinberg is an excellent company. They've been around since like 1989, I think maybe even longer. I have to double check that. But Cubase is older. What I really like about Steinberg is that it has an entire suite of software for you depending on what your needs are. So if you're into audio music production, you have Cubase. But if you decide you want to do like post-production for film, then you can go up to Nuendo. If you're into mastering, Wave Labs is the way to go. Some of the changes that Cubase has dropped in Cubase 12 is they got rid of the dongle and dongleless life is a great life. The way Cubase is priced is that there's different tiers. You would have your elements, which to buy is $90. Then you would have your Q-based artist tier, which is uh, $300. And then if you go up to the Pro, I think it's $500. Another feature that I really like about Cubase is how easy it is now to 
hook up a MIDI controller. You can use MIDI remote to see what kind of controller is connected and it'll start working, which is really nice. A lot of manufacturers are writing the scripts now for their devices that will be updated in Cubase. And so when you plug in, it sees it and off you go. The final DAW on my list is Pro Tools. This is the DAW that I use of choice. I've been using Pro Tools for over 20 somewhat years now. And the reason why I got into Pro Tools is because I had other DAWs I was messing with, but when I started doing session work in other studios, this is what everybody was using. And I wanted to be able to work in these studios. As much as people like to harp on Pro Tools, which I get it, it is still the industry standard. There is a reason why commercial studios still use Pro Tools. So if you're inspiring to work in big commercial studios, then learning Pro Tools is still recommended. I feel out of all the DAWs that I've worked in, Pro Tools as an editor is second to none. I can fly in Pro Tools. Yes, I've cut my teeth on Pro Tools. I've been using it for over 20 years. And when it comes to like production, Editing fast is crucial. I'll use Logic when I'm working with clients for like front end production. So if I'm writing something and I wanna use instruments and I wanna be creative, Logic is amazing. There's a lot of great stuff in there, but at some point I do take those files and move it into Pro Tools. I just like working in Pro Tools better. Let's talk about some things now that we don't like about Pro Tools. And the first thing that always comes to mind and is always the first point of debate is the subscription model. I don't like the subscription model. I don't think anybody likes the subscription model, but the sad reality is as a software company, that's the world we live in now. Companies like Apple can get away with doing a one-time purchase fee. They can lose money on Logic because they know that if you buy Logic and you use it for like two or three years, when you upgrade, you are gonna end up buying another Mac. They make their money that way. And the same thing with Reaper. They know if they have a cheaper fee, they'll get more of the market share, but over time, you are gonna see those prices increase. That's just what software companies do. They're all the same. Let's talk about the packages you get with Pro Tools. First off, they have a free tier. I don't think I would recommend it. The first tier is the artist tier. This is the package that gives you, I think you get 32 tracks. It's $12 a month, which isn't that bad. The next tier up is Pro Tools Studio. And this is kind of like the base level Pro Tools. This tier works out to be over $30 a month. It gives you 512 tracks. This is the tier that I use. I don't need to go any bigger than this. It gives you everything that you would need in a professional studio. So if you're working with clients, you need a lot of tracks, you need all the plugins, they're there. The third tier is Ultimate, and this is aimed at bigger production studios. All of these pieces of software have trials. So what I would recommend is download them, spend a little bit of time playing with them, and just see for yourself what you like. You might not like the editing fu functions in Pro Tools. You might really like Ableton. And in that case, stick with that. If you're looking for free software out there, there's a lot of amazing free DAWs that you can download for your Mac. If you want, here's a list. I'll post it up here. You can see what's going on for yourself. What can you download? Once you find a DAW that you like, make sure you stick with it. Really learn it inside and out. Learn the short keys. And that's what's gonna add value to your production. Not the DAW that you use, but how you use your DAW is what's gonna make you valuable. Anyways, Thank you very much, and I will talk to you guys later. Take care, everyone.